Well, praise God. Good to see you. Good to have you. Let's dive into the Word of God. This is the afterflow. Amen. Where we are coming right after service and just preaching or just extrapolating points that we have given. Uh, you know, today was a powerful pack a Sunday. I believe uh, the Spirit of God was here. Uh, the Word of God came forth bold, strong, and, and I'm just... Um, Believing that uh, that God will even do greater as we're talking with each other on today. So this is almost a informal way uh, of preaching the word of God as, you know, I'm looking for questions that you may have uh, to, to extrapolate on. But um, in lieu of that, I'm just going to kind of talk about what we talked about on service. Uh, we talked about believing for better, and, and I believe that it's a... It's a good time to do that, especially with everything that we have, all the, uh, uh, this uh, uh, pitiful pandemic and uh, this, uh, this uncertain or unsettling uh, racial unrest and uh, this internal uh, terrorism that we find ourselves in as we grapple and battle as to uh, the goodwill of man. And so um, we want, I want to uh, dive into the Word of God. We, as, we, as we look at Matthew chapter 9 and verse 27, uh, that, that particular chapter or verse is unique to Matthew. Actually, Matthew talks about two blind men that um, Luke does not mention, nor does Mark mention in their synoptic text. Uh, uh, and so we, 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 we're, we're, going, we're coming into the mindset of Matthew, the uniqueness of Matthew, as Matthew talks about two blind men. Ironically, Matthew has a way of always recording two things in the Bible. I talked about that earlier on, that, that Matthew would always have two quotes. You remember the quotes that carried Jesus uh, in, Ma in Mark chapter 11, as he goes, marches into Jerusalem on a donkey, a colt, Matthew has two of them. Matthew also has uh, uh, two demonic men that were possessed with legions of devils. As we record in Mark chapter 5 as just one, Matthew has two of them. Uh, Matthew also has uh, uh, two blind men uh, by way of leaving Jericho, where we talk about uh, blind Bartimaeus as one in Mark chapter 10, Matthew has two of them. So Matthew is also always dealing with two. Now understand this, that the two blind men that were in company with the iris, or one of them, would, oh, I'm sorry, one of them, one of them was, was blind Bartimaeus, uh, it's not the two blind men we're talking about today. This particular scene is right after um, Jairus' daughter is brought back to life, uh, resuscitated, not resurrected, but res resuscitated because the only resurrection that we have in biblical study is Jesus Christ. He's the only one that was resurrected from the grave. Other ones, other individuals were simply resuscitated. And so, um, and so, uh, uh, in resuscitation of, 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 of blind, of uh, Jairus' daughter, uh, Jesus is leaving his house and going to uh, his house, or leaving Jairus' house and going to his personal house. As he was going, Matthew tells us that there were two blind men that appear in the text. The appearing of text, uh, and as I spoke about, that the text is really talking about people believing for better, believing for better in their lives. And, and I believe I'm talking to people this, this afternoon, this evening, that are believing for better, believing for a better job, believing for a better uh, a career, believing for better relationship, believing for better health, believing, simply believing for what? For better. And as we, as we look at this text this morning, uh, by way of Matthew chapter 9, we know that these two blind men are in Capernaum because that's where Jesus lived. We know that they were blind. However, the scripture tells us that they followed Jesus. Doesn't tell us how they did that. I don't know if they were just listening to his footsteps and were, were, were just 
follow, using their cane to follow him. I don't know if somebody was leading them and that individual was si is silent in the text. I don't know that they were, uh, if they already knew where he was going to and they, they followed or haven't pre premeditated or pre or pre uh, 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 or, or, or predetermined what he was going to do, and they went there uh, to begin with. The scripture only tells us that he was followed, followed, followed. I don't know about you, but I want to spend my whole life following Jesus. I want to spend the rest of my days following him. That that that, that when I don't quite know what to do, I want to follow him. When I don't know where to go, I want to just. Follow him. If I follow him, I believe that something good is going to happen in my life. And so the text tells us that they followed him. They followed him. Yes, they followed. Then the text tells us in Mark, we're in Matthew chapter 9. Then the text tells us, it says, They departed thence, two blind men followed, and they were crying, saying, They were crying, and they were saying, They were crying, and they were saying, David says it this way, I love the Lord because he heard my cry. I I just thank the Lord that every time I cry out to him, he has a way of listening to me. He has a way of hearing me. He has a way of, uh, of, of um, he has a way uh, of listening to my cry. David says, I love the Lord, not because he gave me a car, a house, or a job. I love the Lord because he heard my cry. I don't know about you this evening or this morning or whenever you listen to me, I believe God hears your cry. The Bible says his ears is attentive to the righteous. Uh, righteousness simply means declared innocent, declared free, declared liberated, declared just. Because, because Jesus Christ has made you righteous, you are righteous, not because of what you've done, but because of who he is. As such, it tells us they cried out to him. Then they said, Jesus, thou son of David, what? Have mercy on me. Jesus, thou son of David, what? Have mercy on me. In other words, have mercy on my limitation. Have mercy on what I cannot do for myself. Have mercy for for. for, uh, uh, for for, for not giving me what I deserve. Have mercy. But they said this way. They said, thou son of David. That's important. It's important because Matthew is, is, is writing to a Jewish mind. He's writing to a Jewish mindset. As such, he wants you to know that Jesus Christ is the legitimate son of David. He is not just a son. He is the son of David. And he is... He is a son of David, the Messiah that, have, that has come to take his rightful throne. Now, 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 now. Um, he says, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The Bible says that Jesus, Jesus goes into his house. They follow him there and he says to them, what do you want me to do for you? No, no, actually, he says to them, excuse me. He says, he says this way, do you believe that I'm able to do this? That's what he says. Do you believe that he is able to do this? That if you are going to believe for better, you've got to believe that God is able to do this. This meaning, this meaning whatever you believe in God for. Understand this, that it is God's will to do this. But you and I need to come to God in prayer in specific Ness, uh, 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 to talk to God concerning what we need. Now, now, real quickly, I'm going to jump in because um, I don't want to, I want to really just give you those four things we talked about um, uh, 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 late th this morning. Those four things we talked about this morning, I want to kind of give that to you because I believe that is the construct as to what I'm going to be talking to you about today. Uh, number one, we said, if, you, if you're going to believe for better, and I know that 
All of us are. Believe, and, and wherever you are in life today, you can believe for better. You can believe for more. You can believe for what more that God wants to do in your life, in my life. More, more, more. Uh, 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 matter of fact, you, I believe you stop growing or you stop even advancing uh, uh, and, stop, uh, and stop being innovative when you stop, when you stop growing, when you stop, when you stop believing for more. And so in this believing for more, the Bible says, uh, Jesus poses the question, do you believe I'm able to do this? Now, matter of fact, let me just pause and say this. The only reason why you should come to God is because you believe. The only reason why you should be in church is because you believe. The only reason why you should be a belief, the only reason why you should be uh, uh, looking at, at what God is doing or, or, or believing that God wants to do more in your life is because you believe. Do you believe that he is able to do this? Matter of fact, in the kingdom of God, it is never what you can afford. It is always what you can believe for. I'll say, I'll say that again. In the kingdom of God, it is not what you can afford. It is always what you can believe for. My question to you this morning or this evening is what can you believe? What can you, do you believe that he is able to, to do this. I know that you've experienced that in the past. I know that he may have done that in the past, but do you believe that even as we are talking today, God is able to do this? And so the Bible says, he says to them, do you believe I'm able to do this? They say to him, yes, Lord. Then he says, then according to your faith, be it done unto you. Now, 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 now. What I want to interject here is number one, if we're going to see supernatural things in our lives and believe God for better, number one, the, the first thing we need to do, the first thing we need to do is we need to go where, we need to come to where he is. We need to come to where Jesus is. We need to come to where Jesus is. is. The Bible says he freely invited us and says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy and, and, and heavy hearted, and I'll give you rest. Learn upon me, because my yoke is easy, <coughs> and, my bur and my burden is few. And you follow me now. Learn upon me. Now, 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 we're good. Now, now, now. Now. <coughs> now. No, now, uh, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is whenever, whenever we're going to God, whenever we do go to God, that we need to understand that, 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 that we've got to come to him. In other words, we've got, to, and scripture, says, scripture says this way, in, in, in um, Hebrews, Hebrews uh, 11 and 6, he says, Whosoever comes to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We've got to go to God. I'm asking you, have you gone to God? If you are believing God for better, have you gone to, have you gone to where Jesus is? The Bible tells us even in his birth, Simeon and Anna went to where he was. If they were going to see the supernatural things that was going to happen in their lives, they, they had to go to where he was. Uh, the, the, uh, the Magi's came from the east and they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And they went to where? They went to where he was. Are you following me now? Uh, 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 we, know, we know that, 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 uh, that, that, that uh, even the, the men that had this this palsy went to where Jesus was. They, 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 they went to where the man that was paralyzed in, in, in Matthew chapter 9 went to where Jesus was. 
What am I saying to you? I'm saying you've got to go to where Jesus is. The woman that had the issue of blood went to where Jesus was. You've got to go to where Jesus is. You've got to go to where Jesus, for, for some of us, that's, that's, that's a physical location. It could be your church. You, I know, I know there have been, there, there have been, there's been a pitiful pandemic that has limited your navigation to where church is. However, I'm asking you that if your church is open, you got to go to where you got to go to where Jesus is. You got to go to where your church is. Then the Bible says, the Bible says, um, it, it says, it says they went to where Jesus was. They went to where Jesus was. In other words, in prayer, you've got to go to where Jesus is. In, 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 in worship, you've got to go to where, create an atmosphere. Bible says he inhabits the praise of his people. In other words, he comes to, as we create that atmosphere that allows him to be in the presence, we come to where he is. Now, the second thing is we've got to know what we're in need of. Yeah, we've got to know what, what, are, what are you in need of? What are you in need of? Not what your mama is in need of. What are you in need of? You've got to understand what you are in need of. The Spirit of God wants to bless your life beyond your imagination. But you and I need to understand, I am in need of a healing. I'm in need of deliverance. I'm in need of restoration. I'm in need, I'm in need of emotional well-being, emotional care. I'm in need of, of promotion in my job. I'm in need of a new house. I'm in need of a new car. I'm in need of a used car. What are you in need of? You've got to know what you are in need of. The Bible says he looks at a blind man, Jesus Christ that is, in, math, in Mark chapter 10. 10, and in verse 41 on down, he looks at a blind man and he says this, what do you want me to do for you? You would have thought that that was obvious, but he needed them to express their need. What are you in need of? You've got to know what you are in need of. Bible says that for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. But just because he gave doesn't mean others will know what they're in need of. I don't know about you, but years ago, I found out that I was in need of Jesus Christ and that Jesus Christ was my answer and that Jesus Christ was going to make me old because I knew what I was in need of. I needed a future. I needed a for fellowship and I needed a friend. I needed a future. I needed a friend and I needed fellowship. And so I, I had, I knew what I was in need of. Another years passed, I was in need of a job. I knew I needed to work in a sp certain industry. And so I went to God. I found where he was in prayer by way of looking at the text of the gospel, the Bible, by way of scriptures that deal with whatever you are believing God for. It traces you to the address of God, allows you you to begin to talk, have an audience with the king where you and I can begin to express our need. Amen. Our need. I need, I need something. I'm asking you this morning, what do you need? What do you need? Because if for, for you to even begin to go to God, Bible says, whoever, whosoever comes to God must first believe that he is. What? That he is, he is what? He is the answer to what you need of. And so the third thing is you've got to know that he is the answer. That's the third thing. That Jesus Christ is not, he's not just an answer. He is the answer. The answer. He's, yes, he is my answer. He is the answer of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave. He is the answer. I, I've come that you have life and have it to the full until it overflows. He is the answer. He is, 
He is our Melchizedek. He is our sanctifier. He is our redeemer. He is our fortress. He is our butler. He is our savior. He is our banner. He is our healer. He is our deliverer. He is. God is. God is the answer. Whatever you are believing God for on today, I believe that God is your answer. Are you following me this morning? So when you come to God, we said believing for better takes number one. Number one, you've got to, you've got to go to where he is. Yeah, yeah, that's number one. Number two, number two, you've got to know what you are in need of. Yeah. I've got to know what I'm in need of. I'm in need of a spouse. I'm in need of a job. I'm in need of a, 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 of a husband. I, I'm in need of a wife. I'm in need, I'm in need of a friend. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in need. Uh, you've got to know what you're in need of. Number two, number two. Number three, excuse me, number three. Number three, you've got to know he's the answer. That Jesus Christ is the answer. He is not an answer. He is the answer. He is the savior of the world the Savior of the world. Amen. He is the answer. Number four, you've got to release uh, agreeable actions to what you believe in God for. The woman had the issue of blood, and so she released agreeable actions or corresponding actions, agreeable actions that, that enhanced or was in line with what she was believing God for. If there's anything faith is, faith is doing everything you know to do in the natural by way of agreeable actions and taking one more step. Taking one more step. Are you following me now? And so, and so, and, and so, uh, this woman had this issue of blood, believing for better, left her house where she was, went to where Jesus was, having thought about what she was going to do, touched the hem, hit physical, f- uh, physical action, and she was made whole. Did not even, he did not even uh, uh, ask God to heal her. She simply took what she needed from Jesus. Why? Because she allowed agreeable actions to touch her life. Number, uh, 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 the, the second person we see is those men in this particular chapter that unroofed the roof where Jesus was. The man did not stay home in the bed. Those boys, those friends, those four friends took him, they took him from where he is, grabbed his bed. It wasn't, and that's another thing. Agreeable actions does not mean that they are favorable or they are easy. It simply means I'm going to take a step and believe God. I'm going to take a step and trust God. I'm going to take a step and choose to follow God. In other words, I'm going to do all that I can in the natural. I'm going to take myself I'm going to take myself or my believer as far as I can to the answer. And when I get there, the only person that can take me to the other side will be Jesus. What am I saying to you? I'm saying you've got to believe God for God's best. I'm saying that you've got to trust that God wants to do something amazing in your life. I'm saying that I'm saying that you've got to I'm saying that you've got to uh, understand that he is the answer. I'm also saying that you've got to take agreeable actions. What are you, what are you believing God for? Take agreeable. If you believe in God for a healthy relationship, stop getting yourself into unhealthy actions, un, 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 unhealthy, unhealthy dating habits, or unhealthy, un, un, unhealthy dating uh, 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 pro, proclivities does not equate a healthy, uh, uh, a long-time relationship. You've got to make agreeable actions. Matter of fact, what you are trying, what you're doing is you are trying to gauge or, 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 or evaluate uh, what's going on by making yourself uh, not, not, you know, not, not up and down, but steady. That I'm going to be, I'm going to make this action and this action is going to be steady all throughout my relationship. I'm talking about agreeable actions. Agreeable actions. If I'm sick, I got to get out the bed because those two don't go together. Agreeable action. If I'm in broke, I mean, I, I got to stop spending. 
because those two don't go together. Are you following me now? Uh, be, being on a being in a budget, being on a budget and spending money are two two opposing things. I've got to have what agreeable actions. Amen. If I'm believing for a promotion, I can't be coming late at work and have to do a job. Agreeable actions. What are you believing God for? You've got to agree with the answer to see the answer. Somebody say, well, pastor, I'm just going to believe for the answer. Once I see the answer, then I'm going to have agreeable a actions because I already have the answer. No, that's not how, how this works. How this works is you've got to believe from where you are. You've got to believe from where you are. Abraham, from where you are, look forward. Eastward, eastward, westward, as far as your eyes can see, I'm going to give it to you. In other words, you've got to believe for where you are. You've got to make agreeable actions, David. You've got to make agreeable actions, Moses. You've got to make agreeable actions, Joshua. You've got to make agreeable actions, Elijah. If you got to make agreeable actions, Thomas, you've got to make agreeable actions, Peter. If you're going to see God's best in your life in 2020, you've got to believe God for agreeable actions. What are we saying today? It's time to believe for better. It's time to believe, stretch out there, believe for better. Believe that God has his hand on you. Believe that you're, 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 you, are not at the, you are not at your wit's end or you are not at the end of your choices. There are plenty more things that God wants to do in your life. I believe and declare that you are blessed. I believe and declare that God has his hands on you. And your, your, uh, your uh, 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 better is about to hit your life. If you're here this morning, you're here this morning, and you don't know Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, you say, well, Pastor, um, I'm believing for better, but I don't, I don't know Jesus. I want to pray for you today. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. I make you my savior, my redeemer, and my fortress. I serve you unto the day I die. I give you everything that is in me, my imperfections, and what I do right. And I thank you for being my savior and my redeemer. If you prayed that simple prayer, we believe that you got born again. Write us, come, come by. If you're in the local to, the, to, to Atlanta area, this is where in the suburbs of Atlanta, by way of Kennesaw, by way of Marietta, come by and see us. We want to love on you and bless you, and, and we believe that God has his hand on your life. I'm going to be coming every, every after, you know, this is the afterflow. I'm going to be coming every Sunday uh, just to share with you the word of God. If you have something, uh, please write it down in the comment section. I want to read that and address that and, and kind of share my thoughts on that as it relates to the word of God. And, um, and, uh, and I just believe that we're going to be blessed. Uh, 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 and and, and I, I, do, I do want to say this. I do want to say this. If you're local, if you're local uh, 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 to, to where you, you know, if you're local to a, a good Bible church, get in a good Bible church and begin to grow. Support that minister, that pastor. Help them out. Uh, 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 you, know, you, you can't imagine what pastors are going through. Help them out and, and be their hands and feet. Amen. And I just believe that God will do something, reward you in, in a place, in an area that, that you, that you, that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Amen. And uh, I just believe that, that, that your best is yet to come as you believe God for better. This is Pastor Michael Oduche Lee. This is Dest Destiny Christian Center. And we're saying Jesus loves you and I love you and we'll see you soon. God bless you. Amen.